Hey everybody, so I'm here at a customer's house who has uh, German yellow jackets going into um, the header above his window. So we're going to get this cut open and see if so we get the nest out of their hole in one piece. They're already swarming and all I did was tap on the window. So we'll, uh, we'll get into this a while and uh, show you guys the activity. All right, so what I decided to do first here with this removal was to actually reverse the vacuum to blow and blow air up inside the hole and get the adults inside the window frame really, really, really agitated. So I did this, I tapped on the window frame a little bit. What I'm trying to do is get them to fly out. So instead of waiting for each one to individually fly out, one by one into the vacuum cleaner while trying to agitate them. It just takes forever. So I just decided, you know what? I'll just reverse the blow, or reverse the blow, and get them all crazy. And you see, men are swarming like crazy. So they're all out of the nest. Now, how they respond is they will fly out, they'll swarm, and then they fly right back to the hole. A common misperception when people watch me vacuum up the yellow jackets or hornets is they think I'm trying to vacuum them out of the hole. But that's actually not what I'm doing. I'm, I'm vacuuming them as they're flying. So mid-flight, as they're landing or taking off. So you, it's, it's really difficult to vacuum these guys off of a surface because they have hooked feet. And those hooked feet are really, really difficult to... Um, I mean, I mean, their 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 feet are made for withstanding high winds and being blown, you know, t t keeping them from being blown off of the surface. So a vacuum, even a super powerful vacuum, is going to be difficult to suck them out of the hole. So you got to kind of wait till they land or take off, and that's usually what I do. So um, just got some shots here of the swarm. I batten down the numbers pretty good, and I just didn't want there to be a large amount in there when I'm cutting open into the. Uh, into the window. So here to try to get the frame off, I decided to cut the joint of the, the window. This is an old fashioned joint with its dovetail inverted. So it's actually inside the frame as opposed to a external dovetail. So I cut it right at the joint. So all we have to do is just glue it back together and just put some brad nails in. So once I opened this up, I actually could see that there was paper envelope there, but the nest itself was up inside. So it was impossible to get that nest from the outside of the house. So we had to go inside and make a few exploratory holes which I started from the ceiling and they weren't up in the ceiling, up in the rafters. So the next thing was they had to be up inside the wall, right up above the window frame. Yeah, <laughs> Let me, uh, they're, they're pretty tall. Let me just Got cut in. You can see up top there. There's where all the or where all the adults are. This is a pretty good sized nest for sure. Let's see how far back it goes. Okay, so it stops pretty much right there, and then it goes over there a good ways. So we're just pulling this thing out. Cool.
Yeah, man, that goes back in there. Huge. Yeah. I think it goes back in there a ways. Let's get, let's get some of these vacuum going. Yeah. It used to be attached up here. But uh, when I was using that pry bar, it knocked it down, it looks like. So what I didn't want to do is just start pulling the comb out with all those live adults in there because then they'd be swarming inside of his house and uh, he has two kids that are allergic. So I just didn't want to take that risk even though the kids weren't home. It's a, a good chunk of comb. And no, wasps do not make honey. Except for the Mexican honey wasp, which I'm in Pennsylvania, the United States. And... <laughs> So all that juice you're seeing is actually larva waste and just moisture from the larva themselves. And this comb was super dense. I mean, when you pull it out, you could just feel the weight of it. There was just so much larva. There was so much uh, new forming adults. And unfortunately, my uh, sawzall blade cut cut the nest into pieces. But so that nest would have been about 14 inches long, maybe 16 inches, and about six to eight inches high, and six to eight inches deep. You can see all the envelope that was laid on the on the outside wall brick there, inside the hole. Very similar to how like a bald-faced hornet will lay its paper envelope on the outside of the comb. That's kind of what they guys these guys do on the inside of the cavity. They lay paper all around. So this removal took about three hours. There was a lot of exploratory events just because I didn't want to make a bunch of holes in his walls. So we started with the ceiling, then we moved outside and then took the frame off the window and then realized where the nest was, was at and then it drilled a hole, just exploratory hole above the window and went right dead center, as you can see. So overall, it was minimal damage. He's able to put a tile right back up over the ceiling so we won't see that hole. Um, and this hole here is just like a, a plaster board. And he's a, a carpenter, so he, he said he would fix it. So um, I didn't have to be bothered with fixing the hole this time. And then the window frame, I just pushed it right back into place. And uh, he, he's going to use some uh, spray foam to fill in this cavity. And then... Uh, caulk the uh, outside opening. So it shouldn't have any more problems with yellow jackets in that area. But as you can see there's really no insulation in this in these walls. So as you can see there's not very many adults flying out and that's the whole reason why I made them swarm from the outside, so that way the majority of the workers come out from the comb and fly outside, and then I suck them up as they try to go back in the hole. Okay. See, there's a method to the madness. I heard you jump. I want to make sure you're all right. All right, so this is inside the cavity. All papered up. Goes 
back in there a little ways, but for the most part, the majority of the comb is out. We'll just finish up vacuuming and spray a little bit and should be good to go. How's that look, Mike? Is that a uh, to go to the right a little bit. Yeah, right there. Okay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Is, that like... is it... Do you see a lot of this board? Yeah, you can see that. Yep. A lot of it or just a portion? About half. There you go. Right there? That's a little better. Yep. Okay. Wait. Can avoid having any unwanted guests while your kids are having. So I decided just to patch this up just using the pieces of plaster I cut out to kind of fill in the majority of the hole and then just duct tape over the hole for now until he can get until he can get new uh, backing board and plaster. So this just keeps any any uh, remaining adults from getting into his house. So once I got home I uh, dumped out the comb so that way I can get it ready to uh, be plucked out of the or get the larva plucked out of the comb for my chickens for all of you larva holics out there I strung together a nice little collection of pulling the uh, larva out of the comb I wish I was this fast at it I did speed this up a little bit <laughs> It's pretty time consuming. It takes me about, probably about an hour to get that tub filled up with larva. And the chickens consume it in about 25 to 30 seconds. So, <laughs> so you notice that like, a lot of these comb are kind of in pieces. Just because of how these this particular species, yellow jacket, makes their comb. They make them in long kind of like unstructured ununiform sizes and shapes the cells are all the same size but the, the just the, the shape of it and the structure of it is different from one to the other so they they are pretty prone to falling apart if one part of it gets compromised so since I cut the one bit with the sawzall a lot of the support structures might have been in the center and not on the ends so when you cut off the ends, they kind of fall apart. The layers fall apart. So as that happens, and as the larvae sit in that tub, it really gets moist and kind of makes it easy to break down. So you see where I start pulling some of the larvae out, it actually pulls some of the, the paper apart while at the same time. And my tweezers get kind of like, start to get build up of paper on them as I do it. So I constantly have to wipe them off. So as you can see, I've been at it for a little while. Tub's getting full. And this one was packed. These were some pretty, pretty big larvae. And someone else has asked um, in one of the comments in my previous videos, why waste all this time using the tweezers when I could just flip the comb upside down and just shake it and shake the larvae out. But as you can see, when I pull on some of these larvae, it pulls the nest because they're they're wedged in there and they have kind of a little bit of a like a bonding mechanism to the inside paper of the, of the cell so it's, it's not a matter of them just flipping over and shaking it because if if you realize how the structure is these nests are upside down where the larvae are hanging upside down out of the out of the comb and if they could just easily fall out they wouldn't last very long inside there being being that being in that uh in that position so they have a way to, to stay inside those cells. So tweezing out is really the only way to get them out of there besides just giving the whole cone to the chickens to eat. I really can't describe just how saturated these cells were. They were I mean, this comb, they were just so heavy and dense.
you might be able to notice with some of these larvae that some of them are actually dead. So they would have been carried out of the cell by the by an adult. As they would be tending to the larvae, they would find out which ones are dead, and then they'd carry them out out of the nest, out of the hole, and uh, drop them off somewhere. Interestingly enough, they're not cannibals, so they, they wouldn't necessarily eat their own larva, which I think is really wild. They'll go out and hunt and kill some, another species of yellow jackets larva and scavenge them, but they won't eat their own. I did a couple experiments with that, watching them with dead larva from a relocated nest, and they always carry them out. That's how I call my girls. I love watching them run. Watch Angel run here. It's hysterical. <laughs> Little waddle. That's Ginger. That had to be about two pounds of, well, maybe not two pounds, maybe a pound and a half of larva. Beep beep. They pretty much handled all that. As if we didn't think that they would. <laughs> and even though Ginger's not eating much right now, she still guards the, the, the leftovers. And then occasionally we'll start pecking at them when the other chickens show interest. And I got lazy with the last couple little like pieces of comb and decided just to toss them to them because I didn't feel like tweezing any more out. <laughs> so. And even after that huge pile, they still went, they still ate more larva. It's incredible. It's just trash guts. <laughs> I kept having to like separate throwing comb because 
Pigeon would start to try to eat one, and then see Angel comes over and pushes her away from it, or Ginger does, or she's such a pushover. Check out the inside of the vacuum. These are all the adult yellow jackets from this day's catch. It's kind of hard to see in the shot. I wish I would have tried to get a better shot of the individuals out of here. But that is one big pile of adults. And that's not even all of them. That's just what I could pick up out of the bucket. There's probably over a thousand there, maybe. Alrighty, buddy. Thanks so much for watching this episode. If you guys enjoyed what you saw here, check out some of my other videos. I have updates coming out usually a couple times a week. Uh, if you haven't been to the, my channel before and you're new and you want to subscribe, please consider doing so. If you're a returning subscriber, thanks so much for supporting my channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. All right, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to check out this removal video from inside of a house. If you guys enjoyed what you see here, check out some of my other videos. Uh, otherwise, I'll catch you guys on the next one.